So I'm, I'm up here for two reasons. One is to talk a bit about um, e-commerce in Africa. Um, and um, as you can hear by my accent, I'm one of the so-called you know, experts with a foreign accent. So i um, try to do my best. And I think the second, more important reason why I'm up here this morning is that I think they're probably saying, let's get the corporate guy out of the way so that the techies can take over the stage. So please bear with me for the next half an hour or so. So a bit of background about myself. Um, I represent um, a group called um, MIH, which is a division of NASPES. NASPES is that big um, media house in South Africa that focuses on you know, print, TV, uh, and also internet. They're not only focused on South Africa, but also on emerging markets in general. Um, I joined NASPES in 2009, first in uh, Singapore, uh, and then my boss found out that my wife is from Cape Town, so there was a comprehensive pitch to be made not only to me, but to the wider family that I should uh, consider coming to Cape Town. And I currently oversee um, the internet businesses for NASPERS in um, Africa, Middle East, uh, India, and Southeast Asia. And you may wonder, and I still wonder sometimes, you know, what, what do those countries and regions have to do with each other? Um, and they're very diverse and very culturally different, but they all play in the you know, early stage phase of internet services. So, whether you are in Indonesia or in India, in South Africa or in the Middle East, um, internet services, including e-commerce, are just about to happen. They're just kicking off now. And there's some interesting learnings across that one can imply. And before I joined um, NASPES, I was with eBay for, for nine years, first in Germany, which is my home country, uh, then China, Korea, um, and Southeast Asia. So what am I going to talk about? First, a bit about um, what's the state of e-commerce in Africa? Um, and what are some, you know, learn, um, some, some kind of comparisons that one can draw between you know, the developed world um, and the emerging world in terms of um, e-commerce services. Then a bit of background on um, you know, our operations, our footprint from an MIH internet perspective. What are we doing currently um, in Africa and why? Uh, and then last but not least, um, some learnings, some insights from um, you know, our first couple of years of doing e-commerce services in Africa. What, can one learn and what can one apply uh, to the future? So first of all, this is the typical money chart, right? So e-commerce is on the rise you know, around the globe. And the most important indicator that people look at is usually um, what's the share of e-commerce out of total retail? Um, and that's a, kind of an indicator that, that is comparable across the board. Um, so you can normalize it, you know, compare big countries with small countries, et cetera. And usually what, um, what one says is that once e-commerce hits you know, at least 1% um, of, of, of total retail in terms of the, the, the money value, then um, a certain tipping point has been reached. And that's usually the point in time where you know, online retailers are starting to scale, more and more merchants are coming from offline to online, um, et cetera. And that point in time has happened in the US roughly around 2000. Uh, and that's also when you know, Amazon and some of those guys you know, started to scale. Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is always that um, the U.S. is the most successful um, e-commerce market. That's wrong. Um, despite you know, Amazon, eBay, Groupon, etc., cetera, um, the most successful e-commerce market, if you look at it from you know, e-commerce as a percentage out of retail, is actually in the Far East. That's Korea. Um, and if you look at um, the, the chart up here, it's almost you know, double um, you know, the size of e-commerce on a relative basis you know, compared to... Um, to the US, and that has a couple of reasons. You know, number one, the Korean government was pushing affordable um, you know, broadband internet access to the masses um, many, many years ago. And usually what you say is that um, e-commerce is an internet service that people embrace, maybe not in their first year that they are online, but maybe in their second, third, or fourth year. So there is a bit of build up that, that leads up to, to a sophisticated service you know, such as e-commerce, given the money flows involved, et cetera. Um, and then I think secondly, um, and I lived in Korea, I'm half Korean um, uh, for, for a bit, and um, online retailers are really cutting edge when it comes to applying um, new kind of retail techniques to the internet, whether it's you know, around merchandising, going for new um, categories such as fashion, um, et cetera. Um, you know, they were the first that, that offered kind of same-day delivery services within major cities way before um, the U.S. was doing that probably. So um, if I take that and if I compare that to Africa, at first glance, it doesn't look pretty. 
So um, I just took out um, you know, three countries um, that kind of represent North Africa, the, the center of Africa, and, and then South Africa. And if you look um, across the board uh, at a couple of indicators, um, they are way behind um, you know, the international peers in the, in the developed world, um, in the Western world, and in the Far East. Um, first of all, um, internet penetration is still not at a level that, um, that, that, you, that, that we know from, from, from the more developed world. And that's actually a double whammy um, for, for e-commerce because number one, you have less people that could potentially um, you know, uh, use e-commerce services. And number two, the people that um, are online actually, in most cases, came online quite recently. So they are probably still going through the, um, the typical um, evolution of first, you know, doing communication services, accessing social networking, et cetera, before they go to more sophisticated services that, again, include money flows, et cetera, and delivery, you know, such as e-commerce. Um, so that means that if you look at this indicator that I talked about, e-commerce as a percentage of retail, all of the African countries are way below 1%. Um, and in most cases, it's, it's, it's around 0.1% or even lower. Um, South Africa is already a bit higher. It's currently the, the, the leading um, uh, e-commerce uh, site, uh, e-commerce country um, on the continent, but still that's um, you know, way off 1% as well. Um, another factor that actually um, does impact um, e-commerce and it's not, um, doesn't help Africa is that credit card penetration is so low. So if you think about any um, e-commerce service that has reached scale anywhere else in the world, it was mostly on the back end of um, you know, credit card as a preferred payment channel. Um, and, uh, and also, if you even look at online payment services such as PayPal, they usually mostly use credit card as a funds, funds and mechanism. Um, and given the, the very low penetration um, in, in, in the whole of Africa, um, that doesn't help e-commerce at all. So the net result of that is, if you take any kind of top 100 ranking um, in any country in Africa um, in terms of internet assets, um, you know, there are very few um, e-commerce assets around. It's either non, like, uh, like in Egypt, um, or if you could take a look at countries like Nigeria or Kenya, there's starting to be e-commerce sites out there, but they're mostly around classifieds, online classifieds, so the, the, the Gumtree uh, type of model where um, fulfillment is done offline. Um, and in South Africa, yes, you start to see um, kind of e-commerce players emerging, um, you know, across the fold and different, and different uh, with different service offerings. But if you compare each one of those to, you know, let's say the U.S. and what's the position of an Amazon in the U.S. versus a Kalahari in South Africa, or um, an, an eBay in the U.S. and a bid or buy in South Africa, um, the, um, the the South African companies always rank lower. So there is still some. Some, some, way to, uh, some, some room to improve. So if you look at this, we could all go home and say like, okay, maybe in five years from now, in 10 years from now, and we, um, we ignore it for now. And in fact, many global companies do that. They, they, they ignore um, Africa on their global roadmap or it's prioritized you know, further you know, way down. You know, we believe, and I think more and more people believe that actually there are a lot of indicators out there that, that hint at a great future for e-commerce in Africa. And if you, if you start now, then you can, um, then, then, then you can basically uh, you know, benefit from, from, from the future upside of those markets. Just to name a few of those indicators. Um, first of all, the, 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 the big macro indicator, GDP growth. Um, I mean, people forget that Africa is growing you know, much, much nicer than many Western European markets. Uh, even, even the U.S. with regards to GDP. Uh, and that has fundamental impacts on also the size of retail, which then has you know, knock-on effects on the size of online retail if people have more disposable income that they can, that they can work with. Um, I think also what's starting to emerge is that, that, that researchers realize that the way to look at middle-class definitions um, in Africa may have been wrong. And you have to take into consideration um, the different purchasing powers um, in, um, in, in, in many African countries versus you know, you know, more developed countries. And if you apply you know, different criteria to what constitutes someone to fall into a middle class, then some people argue middle class in, in, in Africa could already be you know, a third of um, the total population of, of Africa. And middle class is usually, uh, again, um, one that, that has more disposable income, that can access more, um, kind of, that can consume more retail services, including online retail services. Um, we all know this, uh, and I think that's, that's something that, that still amazes me um, to this day, that, that people 
may have a lot of may, may have to kind of leave away leave leave aside a lot of things, but they're not leaving aside their their mobile phone in Africa, and that's that's interesting for e-commerce and, and, and in fact any internet service for two reasons. One. Um, it can become the main access channel um, to also consume e-commerce or then m-commerce services. And if you look at some global peers, you know, like Japan, they are already doing um, that, you know, quite effectively. Um, and secondly, um, I think, as we all know, um, the mobile network is one of the few infrastructure sets in Africa that that does work somewhat reliably. So to also use that basically as your um, access to broadband internet access, whether you use it through your mobile phone or your computer is a huge, huge advantage that Africa has and will have you know, in the future. Uh, and then, I guess, no tech presentation in Africa without some kind of chart describing the, all the you know, undersea water cables that are bringing broadband into the continent. That's um, extremely important for e-commerce because you can get away with low bandwidth um, for a lot of internet um, services, you know, such as social networking, such as communication, chatting services, but you can't get away with low bandwidth um, in most cases with regards to e-commerce because these are sophisticated uh, transactions that you have to conduct. You know, checkout has to access usually a payment gateway. If you are, if you are dealing with low, low with, with bandwidth constraints, that this can seriously hamper your know, development of your e-commerce service. And then last but not least, while we are all here, that it becomes more and more uh, easy or easier for um, entrepreneurs in Africa to conduct business and, and we certainly believe, although re representing you know, a big corporate, that a lot of innovation also in e-commerce, same way as it has been taking place all across the world, will come out of the garages and not out of the, um, out of the corporate labs. So um, because of all of this, we made a decision as, as MIH Internet to, um, to focus um, on Africa, and we, um, we haven't regretted that decision. Uh, uh, since then, and, and what that basically means is that we are focusing on um, on you know, South Africa, which is the most developed um, e-commerce market in Africa, and also kind of our backyard from a from a from a NASPERS perspective. Um, and then we basically um, move further northwards with regards to um, to our e-commerce services. And I will explain, you know, what the icons mean in a minute. So. Separate to or different to other e-commerce services that focus on a, on a very specific niche of e-commerce like you know, daily deals or online auctions or online retail, etc. We um, try to cover the whole value chain. And the analogy that I'm always using is you know, we want to take a shopper you know, by the hand the first time he becomes aware of a product, then realizing that he can get that product online, identifying what's the right product, what's the right merchant, etc., to buy the product, to then actually buy the product to one of our services, and to pay for the product, and to resell maybe the old product that he was, last generation's product that he was using. Uh, and ideally, we would like to occupy all those boxes uh, and, and provide a relevant service, um, service across. Um, so the services that we're currently offering is a um, service called Mocality. Uh, Mocality CEO spoke last year at, at the Net Profit. That's a mobile business directory that brings businesses online. Um, we um, focus on services like Price Check that, um, that in South Africa compare products and merchants. So you're looking for um, the new iPad and you can look at Price Check and see who, who is offering it at, at, at what price. Um, then, then Kalahari.net, which is um, our own foray into online retailing. Um, and pay you, which is our, our payments uh, service provider, so kind of like a, like a PayPal uh, equivalent in the market. And then last but not least, uh, Dealfish, or in South Africa, it's actually called Kalahari Ads, which is our online, online classified service. So um, with all this as an intro, um, I think that I can share today some of the learnings that we have um, obtained over the course of the last you know, year or two in terms of what constitutes a, a successful e-commerce service in a market um, like Africa. And all of those learnings are actually, you know, they're not rocket science and they're actually quite logical if you kind of consider the African context. But um, I think the, 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 the success is really determined by applying all of those four effectively to anything that you do e-commerce uh, related in Africa. So let's go through those uh, one by one, and I, lose, uh, I will use a lot of kind of MIH internet examples here. So if you dislike that, um, then you can just close your eyes and 
think of your favorite company that, uh, that uh, you would see in that spot. Um, so first of all, embrace mobile. So let's um, recap a bit of the Mocality learnings. So Mocality, in a nutshell, was founded to provide um, kind of a yellow pages to the masses um, in markets like Kenya, um, Nairobi, um, as, as one of the sub-markets, et cetera. What's the fundamental problem here? Fundamental problem is if you know, PC penetration is so low uh, in a market like Kenya um, that if you want to provide a service to the masses, you, you can't really do that by accessing you know, um, it through the, the traditional way, uh, a PC-based you know, internet service. So what the Mocality team did was they, um, they focused on a, on a, on a mobile-centric offering. So everything that, um, that, that, that you can do through Mocality, whether you are a merchant that um, lists his business um, um, on the service or that you know, uses the Mocality service as a CIM tool to interact with its clients, or whether you are a consumer that is looking for a certain service um, on Mocality, um, everything can be done through the mobile phone. Um, and, and almost like when Mocality was started, you know, the PC um, was, was done as an afterthought. Um, and that actually, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, we believe, you know, leads to actually a better utility to the user. So think about this example. So, you know, you, you, you sit online, uh, you sit at home uh, uh, on your PC and you're looking for the cyber cafe. And it's like kind of remember how it looks like and where it's located. And then you end up um, at this more or less, you know, formal uh, office building and you're trying to kind of find it. Um, and if you don't have your mobile phone with you and if, you, if a service is not kind of designed in a way that it optimizes on the mobile phone, it's kind of impossible. You can go back home, you can start from zero. So. Um, I think actually it's, yeah, it's over there, second floor. So, um, so that's, a, that's a utility that you can only have to being constantly mobile through a mobile-centric um, service. So second um, learning, um, leverage offline. Uh, and as I said earlier, you know, in, in markets where the percentage of e-commerce is like, in some cases, less than 0.1% out of total retail, that um, almost becomes, I mean, if you don't do it, then, 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 then you're dead in the water. Uh, dead, yeah, uh, dead out of the water. So this is the, um, this is the default that, that you're dealing with um, for um, an online service such as you know, Dealfish that focuses on online classifieds. So that's actually um, a picture taken on the roads of, of Lagos uh, in Nairobi where people just use you know, a wall, you know, some kind of public space to look for, um, for, for talent uh, for, for businesses. So you can, you know, they're looking for an advert, executive, a driver, everything is kind of written there on the wall. And that's not the exception, that's the default that you're dealing with in Africa. So what you have to do, if you want to provide successful online classified service, for instance, you have to go where the users are, where the default is currently you know, being conducted. Um, and it's not good enough to just use the typical kind of online marketing mix to buy you know, keywords on Google. You have to actually go onto the streets to, 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 to target the merchants um, and to, to also engage with your, with your, with your consumer audience. Um, if you've been to uh, Nairobi, they have these you know, prime real estate um, shopping mall locations which look very similar to, um, to, to almost like um, you know, uh, a Cavendish or a v &A waterfront. Uh, type of retail locations, but within those retail locations, you have these meter-long walls of uh, of classifieds, so people putting up their ad, etc., which um, is again, you know, a great you know hunting ground for for, for leads for for our teams that basically look at at those ads and you know to contact the owner, uh, the, the the advertiser directly, and try to convince them to come online. Again, it's something you can't do if you're just using Google or the typical online marketing mix in those countries. Um, and this is actually a picture from uh, the roads of Lagos uh, in, 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 in Nigeria, where, where you, you, you need to do marketing you know, on the streets where the people are. They are not yet uh, online in a massive fashion. Um, cash is king. Um, so we talked about the, the low credit card penetration, and the reason for that is, is as follows. So you, so you have roughly a billion people in Africa um, 50 million bank accounts, a very low penetration of actually banked you know, people in, in Africa. And 95% of the transactions are actually cash-based. So even people that have a bank account, they often you know, take all that money out of their bank account on the day that money flows in from, from their employer, and they do most of the transactions uh, uh, offline. So how on earth 
can you leverage that for, for an, an online-based uh, 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 commerce service? So we've all heard the M-Pesa example. So this is not an MIH example, um, but I need to put in some, some neutrality in this presentation as well. Um, so, so forget all the stories that you read on, on TechCrunch, um, on Square, and all these you know, shiny um, uh, uh, you know, credit card readers that enable, that, that use the, the audio jack of, of, your, of your newest iPhone, etc. Still up to this day, the only mobile payment service with scale is actually in Kenya. And that's, and that's in PESA. And the latest numbers are staggering as usual. So you already have you know, around, um, I think it's uh, blue, 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 blue. Um, it's you know, almost 15 million people active in PESA users um, in, in Kenya and you know, 23,000 merchants or so that use in PESA where you can kind of upload money, etc. cetera. Um, and and PESA was used as a, as a P2P uh, payment service so you can send money from from Nairobi where you work, you know, back home uh, to your village. But what's happening now is, what they're actually doing is they're converting that cash economy to a virtual economy. So they're bringing, you know, cash into digital form. Uh, and that can now be used to also, you know, conduct, you know, e-commerce transactions. So, so you can, or also kind of offline transactions, obviously. So here, first step was to say, you can pay with M-Pesa for goods and services at your supermarket. I think now the second step would be to also pay for some, all kinds of digital items. You actually don't even need to go to the supermarket. You can use it you know, to pay for tickets, um, travel, uh, et cetera. Um, and I think that, um, that moving forward, you will see this more and more, that you can also use M-Pesa for paying for e-commerce services, et cetera. So these are the type of payment services that you need to leverage, and, not the, um, and not, you can't fully rely on the credit card, credit card um, uh, as a payment channel. So, so last but not least, build trust. Um, and, and here's again the, the, the phenomenal thing about eBay, you know, my, my previous employer. And up to this day, it absolutely amazes me that there is a service that connects complete strangers um, and they don't even only you know, chat with each other or you know, play games with each other. They're actually sending money to each other and then expecting that you know, in return they get some kind of product. Uh, and all of this is based on you know, a feedback system that is also done by strangers that you have never met. So absolutely, absolutely mind-blowing up to this day. But it, it also points out a, a very unique difference here between um, you know, Western markets like the US or Germany, where I come from, where, 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 the, where trust is much higher a default how to kind of conduct business, um, as opposed to many emerging markets that, that we are dealing with, you know, including Africa. Um, and that's, a, that's, that's, that's one of the fundamental flaws for an open marketplace um, a model in a market like, uh, like, um, like, like Africa, where um, people may be not having this trust in, in, in the stranger to send money to it. So one way to solve this, um, how, how, how we do it um, you know, on, on MIH, is that we're trying to um, provide a more controlled, trusted environment and to associate that controlled, trusted environment with a strong brand. So if you take the Kalahari example again, um, Kalahari is an online retailer like Amazon, so they basically you know, guarantee that um, you, you, you get your supply, you don't have to rely on some kind of long tail seller that you've, that, that you've never met. Um, they, um, they also provide the logistics service, they provide you know, a trusted payment service, et cetera. And we are now extending that online retail um, a service to also the marketplaces model where we have in higher you know, verification standards um, for merchants that use the Kalahari platform. It's a secure kind of escrow enabled um, delivery service where you check the product first before you release the payment to the seller, um, et cetera. And key to this is really to, to build up that strong brand that, that consumers associate with trust. And again, to build up that strong brand, you should not only rely on, on the typical online marketing mix, you should definitely go offline. You know, the way that Kalahari, for instance, does it, you know, they, they do you know, extensive you know, brand marketing campaigns on the print side, um, on, on TV, um, either um, you know, co-branding situations like here with Visa or you know, as standalone. Um, and they try to just become you know, part of you know, everyday life in South Africa. So this is a new um, billboard campaign of uh, Kalahari, which um, uh, kind of uh, you know, uh, uses a current theme um, that, that's, that's currently prevalent in South Africa, which is the election next, uh, next week. Um, yeah, and to kind of communicate our own, <laughs> our own promises uh, to the user. Um, and service delivery is important for us as well. Um, so in summary, 
I think if you take, you know, again, you know, two steps back, um, Africa has a, has a great potential. At the end of the day, it's a billion people. You know, China has you know, 1.3 billion people. India has a bit of a billion people. So Africa in itself um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a big, is a big place where um, there will be an emerging middle class and there will be um, you know, an online retail market emerging. The question is not if, but the question is when. So you need to bring some, some bit of patience to it. But um, if you look at any kind of other market, um, there was always a big, um, a big advantage that, that, that first movers had in, in any of those markets, whether it was Amazon in the US or, um, or um, kind of a internet auction G market in Korea, they, um, they, they benefited from their, 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 their first mover advantage in order to reach scale and have network effects kick in. But you got to do it in the African way. You, you can't do it in some kind of copy-paste way looking at what is working in the US and just applying the same, the same uh, type of methodology here into Africa. You have to kind of consider the uniqueness of Africa with regards to mobile, offline, um, the cash economy, which is still a default, and the need for really trusted services and trusted brands. Um, and our own objective, just to recap that as well, is we, we are committed to Africa and we see Africa from an e-commerce perspective as a whole value chain of interlocking services. Um, and, and we are in it for, for the long haul. And we invite you know, everyone to, uh, to join us on this journey to, to build a great um, e-commerce market for this continent. Thank you very much.